here, yes. Okay, and you see a uh, red dot in the upper right hand corner indicating that everything from here on out is being recorded. So with that, I'll turn it uh, back over to the uh, leaders of this uh, session. Okay, thank you, Craig. Welcome everybody. And this is our second Friday morning climate talk. I'm Bill Haskell with San Francisco Village and I'm facilitating today's discussion, focusing on active allies. I'd like to do something that we didn't do last time because we're a relatively small group and we don't all know each other. So why don't you just give your name and which village you're affiliated with? So as I said, I'm Bill Haskell with San Francisco <clears throat> Village and back to you, Craig. Um, why don't you just tell us where you're affiliated? Uh, yeah, I'm a uh, volunteer uh, with HB Village. I'm one of the, uh, the Zoom experts and I've been uh, volunteering for HB Village for about uh, three years. Okay, thank you. I'm going to turn it to Bruce. I'm Bruce Johnson. I'm with the San Francisco Village, and I'm the note taker today, and I'll be writing up um, what what goes on and uh, sending that along uh, for further review and then reporting out in, in the May 14th, I believe it is, large group meeting. Thank you. And Steve Hayashi. Uh, I'm Steve Hayashi, and I'm a member of the San Francisco Village. and. Uh, along with Bill on, on the board. And Jeremy? Hi, everybody. I'm Jeremy, and I am uh, an associate of Felix, and I volunteer with Active Allies. And specifically, I am uh, the initiator for the Central Valley Grow Better initiative. And Felix? I'm Felix Kramer, and uh, I'm oh in Ashby Village and Active Allies. Thank you. And Julie? I'm Julie Freestone with Ashby Village, and I'm on the board and also a member and a volunteer. Thank you, Julie. And Margaret, you're on mute, Margaret. Yes, they're working on the building next door. Uh, Margaret Mishner, I'm with San Francisco Village. Thank you. And Janet and Dvorak? Um, I'm Janet Bertram, and I'm a member of Ashby Village. Thank you. And I'm Will Dvorak, and I'm a member of Ashby Village also. Thank you. And Linda? Um, Linda Greenberg from um, SF Village. Thank you, Linda. Sheila? You're on mute, Sheila? No? OK. She's, All right. She's from Ashby Village. Great. Okay. Thank She's you. Volunteer. Thank you. And Hannah. Hi, everyone. I'm Anna Michelle, and um, I'm with Active Allies. I'm the co founder along with Felix. Thank Great you. To today. Jillian. Hi, my name is Jillian. Um, I'm working on some projects through Felix right now. Thank you. Okay, um, Sheila, Sheila is an act is an Ashby Village volunteer, and then I don't know the other. There's Toby Klein. That's me. I'm uh, with the Ashby Village, and I have been a member since before there was an Ashby Village. That's pretty good. Long time. That's long time. And then the last person, I don't know who that is. I think that's an Ashby Village person. Jay Cheat, Cheat. Well, I guess we're just gonna go ahead then. Um, some people on this call today may have already heard about Active Allies at our first large group session back in March, but there was limited time then at that session for interactions with our presenters. So this talk today will provide another opportunity for you to learn more and to talk with our presenters, uh, be led by Felix Kramer. As part of his presentation, Felix will explain to all of us specific actions, <clears throat> excuse me, specific actions and opportunities for you to consider. Bruce Johnson mentioned that he's our note taker today. So he'll be 
recapping at the end of this talk, five minutes about what he's, what he's written down and ask you for any additions. And then later on May the 14th at our second large group session, he'll report out what you all expressed interest in today and what are the high caps, the high points from the presentation. So let's talk about the agenda for today, just uh, some high points about that. The presentation on Active Allies will be about 10 minutes. There will be Q&A regarding the organization for another 10. Then we'll have a discussion of volunteer roles in Active Allies, and that'll be about 10 minutes. Then there will be Q&A regarding roles and volunteering for another 10. And then Bruce Johnson will do his recap and ask you for additions for roughly five minutes. So that's the way that this meeting is going to go today. And now I'd like to turn it over to you, Felix, uh, one of the founders of Active Allies. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bill, and everybody. Uh, welcome to all the village members from East Bay and San Francisco. Uh, I hope some of you have had a chance to review our resources document. Uh, after this talk, it'll have even more links, and you'll get uh, a link to that with, with Bruce Johnson's notes from today. And welcome to some of our startup team. Joining us are Anna and Jeremy and Jillian, who's just beginning to help out. Back in March, you heard Costanza. Uh, she can't be here today because we're happy to say she got a full-time job uh, as a Climate Corps fellow. Uh, so today, I'm really excited to tell you about three ambitious and hopeful ideas and how you can help. Uh, one is less than a, year, a month old. And I hope you're going to agree we're onto some big things and you'll want to find a way you can help. So first, a bit about me. Uh, I'm a member of Ashby Village and I've been an attendee and fan of groups including Elder Action, Arts and Culture, Science and Ideas, Ashby Walks, and the Hearing Loss Group. And uh, uh, I may uh, ask you to repeat something today if I don't hear it well. Uh, plus, my wife, Rochelle Lefkowitz, is an Ashby Board Ashby Village board member. So she helped develop this program, but unfortunately, uh, shortly after the first event, she has been sidelined with a concussion. And I want to thank all of you who stepped in to organize these seven events. Uh, it's quite amazing what, uh, what she and Bill started. Uh, so I'm a full-time volunteer and climate advocate and activist. Uh, 15 years ago, my work with the California Cars Initiative, CalCars, gained lots of attention. We got automakers to build plug-in hybrids, and it felt great to declare a partial victory. We need more of those, and we need people who believe we can actually uh, get ourselves out of these messes. Uh, so this presentation is pretty factual, but on March 5th, I talked a little more personally. I talked about being determined that this decade would be transformational for us and for our world about how we can gain purpose and hope from working on our paramount challenge, climate change. Uh, about thinking about what we do and, uh, uh, and what we need to do in terms of scale, scope, and speed, three really key metrics. And about the idea that uh, for us in our 60s to 90s, it is possible to imagine that our most significant accomplishments could still be ahead of us as we work with younger people especially. So if you missed that talk, you can find a link to it uh, at the Ashby Village YouTube channel. And at our resources document, we actually have a transcript of, of uh, that March event. Uh, and so when, when he's asked about what people should do about climate change, uh, Bill McKibben, the writer and founder of 350, he says, join a group. Pretty obvious, basic. I would uh, say before that, uh, talk about climate all the time with everybody you know. Uh, and you could find a group that works for you. I, I know last week people were saying, there's so many groups, how do I decide? Why don't they all work together more? Uh, and actually people in the Bay Area, the, the groups here are very collaborative. If you become active with any of these five groups, I predict that your mental and emotional state will improve. Uh, and there's more groups uh, uh, on our resources list list, we include pointers to a lot more organizations to explore. And uh, the, that list will, will show up uh, uh, in, uh, in the, the notes. Uh, you may have heard of some of them, and maybe others not. National groups such as Air Miners, Climate Awakening, Climate Reality, Citizens Climate Lobby, Environmental Entrepreneurs, Foundation for Climate Restoration, and Greenpeace. Some of those have local chapters. And they're state and local climate and environmental justice groups. 
Climate Emergency Mobilization Task Force, California Environmental Justice Alliance, Communities for a Better Environment, and Youth Versus Apocalypse. And I'm glad to wear a Sunrise t-shirt and the Sunrise Bay Area Hub has a group for over 35s. So uh, a little now about active allies. Uh, compared to the other groups, we're a little different because we're really in a formative stage. And here's how we describe active allies. We're advancing climate action and justice through youth employment and intergenerational collaboration. We older people connect with young adults who can supply the energy, vision, and leadership to save us. We can all work together to defend, restore, and regenerate our communities and our world. Uh, Active Allies has roles for people like us. We invite you, if you have time or resources, to explore becoming a sponsor, mentor, or advisor. We can explain more in the questions. And this uh, uh, graphic was done by uh, uh, a volunteer uh, who's uh, retired from, uh, from doing these kinds of things her whole life. Uh, Active Allies has roles, uh, uh, let's see, so, so um, uh, I said that. Uh, um, <coughs> Oh, no, I, I actually didn't get that. Active Allies has roles for people like us. We invite you, if you have time, to be explore becoming a sponsor, mentor, or advisor. We can explore more about all of those in the questions. And young adults can be project managers. Uh, we aim to turn volunteers into paid employees of projects and groups. Our proof of concept includes one of our core partners, 350 Bay Area. They presented last Friday. Maybe you saw Nan Farley. If not, you still can, and I encourage you to go back. We've helped provide support for Tallulah and Nick, you know, who are on the bottom right there. They're two projects as 350 Bay Area Youth Climate Organizers. We're working to gain support to increase Nick's hours and to bring on a combination digital campaign and campaigner and volunteer manager. And uh, now I would say it's time for some questions on all of this and uh, Anna, Jeremy and Jillian may pick up some. So we don't need the slides now. Thank you, Jeremy's running that show. So uh, do I call on people? Sure, you can go uh, ahead. Uh, Margaret. You're, you're on mute. mute. You're muted. How, how do you get the money to pay for them, for their salaries? Basically, uh, the, the roles of people like us is to be sponsors or funders. And so uh, in some cases, we have a person who commits to, uh, uh, to pay half of the, uh, uh, of, of the salary of a person uh, and, uh, and at two different levels, at the level of a person who has a little, uh, some resources and at the level of somebody who has a lot of money. Uh, and the combination uh, of, of uh, specifically uh, 20 hours a week at $25 an hour uh, versus 20 hours a week uh, uh, at $50 an hour, that gives a young person in the Bay Area, if they get that pairing, that gives them $72,000 a year. And that may sound like a lot of money, but the importance of that number is that is enough money for a person who's in their early 20s, who is tempted to take a tech job to say, I'm not going to take that well-paid, meaningless to me, tech job. I want to work on what I care about most. And so that's how we started. Uh, that's how Anna started for, first, where she was paired between me and, uh, uh, and someone uh, from an organization called the Anthropocene Institute. And then she went off uh, uh, and is now full time over there. And so uh, we're, we're working on uh, uh, individuals pairing with specific uh, 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 project managers or donating to the organization as a whole. Julie. Um, you said at the very beginning that you had three ideas for us and how to help. Yes. Could you, did you tell us about the three ideas? Well, well I, I could do that now. Uh, uh, it's the first thing I do after these questions. So let's, let's, uh, let's take more questions and then we can go right into that. Okay. Stephen. Uh, in terms of the funding, uh, 
basically it's it's from individuals to individuals or do you have um some corporate sponsors as well or or what uh, we're about to uh, work on a, on a pretty ambitious pr uh, project to get a, a group of people who've known each other for uh, for a decade on on climate to uh, come in and 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 be sponsors as a group. We are uh, yet, not yet an established organization. We don't have a 501c3 sponsor. We're looking for uh, for uh, the right organization to do that with, and there will be a combination of the opportunity to to uh, sponsor uh, tax with tax deduction. Uh, and that's a case where you're sponsoring someone uh, who is doing something in the world that you just think is great or uh, non-deductible where you have a great idea that you want to want to work on and you want to connect with someone in their 20s uh, who, uh, 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 who, who can help you and work with you. So you're getting a benefit from that. And currently, uh, Jillian just started working with a, a, a longtime colleague of mine who's resuming. Uh, he, he had five monthly events uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. He's, res he's resuming that now, and she's helping him organize and get out the word on that. And so that's uh, 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 that it currently is paid directly from uh, from Gil to Jillian. And uh, in, the f in the future, we'll have a mechanism for that so that we'll be able to have withholding and all the other kinds of things you need for long-term employment. Bruce. Okay, so you mentioned um, sort of roles for folks from the villages as sponsors, mentors, and advisors. Yes. Um, so I get the sponsor sounds like it would be somebody who could donate some money. Um, could you talk a little more about what mentors and advisors? Right. So are? the spon the sponsors are uh, definitively we're donating money either to enable a young person who's let's say in Sunrise to work full time at Sunrise, uh, and uh, and because I think that's a great idea, or to work on a specific project of Active Allies or on a pet project that one of us has always wanted to do something about. Because what I uh, what I say to lots of people uh, is we're all so busy and why don't we get someone who's in their 20s to work with us to extend our reach and become more effective. Uh, that's the, uh, the sponsor one. Uh, the mentors is a person who doesn't have a financial uh, relationship, but basically is going to work with one of the project managers to advise them and help them uh, in terms of their knowledge of climate or uh, operationally in all sorts of ways. Uh, and the advisors are people who uh, are pr pretty much connectors. Uh, the people who say, "Oh, you're starting to work on that. Here, let me let me connect you with five people that I know who can help you," uh, and those are the main roles there. And so, active allies. Then it sounds like uh, you mentioned with sponsors, like uh, someone who's donating money might sponsor someone to have a full-time job at Sunrise, for instance, mm -hmm. or some non-active allies group. Does the same go for mentors and advisors? That they might that somebody connected with active allies might be mentoring somebody who's working with sunrise or 350 absolutely oh cool okay yes, yes. thank you uh any other questions maybe not so let's uh, uh i have a and, question um, yeah when you get 501c3 status do you think you'll be looking more broadly for corporate support or any kind of organizational support beyond individuals? Uh, we haven't really gotten to that yet. And we don't intend to be our own C3. When I founded CalCause years ago, we became a sponsored project of, of a fiscal uh, of a fiscal agent. Those are the technical terms there. So we're planning on affiliating with a Bay Area uh, climate focused organization probably and become their sponsored project. Got it. Uh, yeah, and as far as corporate, uh, we, we do think it's it's very possible, and that's the kind of thing where uh, some high-powered volunteers or or project leaders uh, could could get involved in that. Uh, in particular, uh, well. Uh, the two projects, uh, one related to plug-in cars and one related to uh, regenerative agriculture, each of them give us the opportunity at that point to approach corporate uh, corporate sponsors for sure. I reflect on the letter that was sent, I think, you know, with hundreds of corporate signatures on it about climate action and climate change. I don't remember the details, but it's a very recent letter. And I, you know, so the, the interest is there. 
Yeah, and I mean, co corporations are starting to step up in doing more than just having a plan for where they're going to be in 2050. For instance, uh, Microsoft and, uh, and and Stripe and a couple of others have said they're going to uh, remove enough carbon dioxide, not just stop emitting, but remove enough carbon dioxide to account for all their historical emissions, and they're going to pay for that. And Amazing. so those kinds of things are, are really happening in a big way. And uh, we're working closely with a group called airminers.org, which assembles all those people around the world in projects and companies who are working to not just reverse global, not just end emissions, but reverse global warming. Amazing. So uh, why don't we then go back to uh, uh, to uh, second stage here. Uh, so we're going to describe three startups and one other top project for which we're looking for volunteer leaders, sponsors, mentors, and advisors to support us in bringing on project managers. First is uh, Grow Better. We want to rapidly speed the transition of farms and communities to regenerative agriculture. And here's Jeremy to talk about the project he's passionate, that project that he's passionate about and about its pilot Central Valley Grow Better initiative. Thank you, Felix. Uh, since we're a little ahead of time, I'll just quickly introduce myself, uh, though I didn't necessarily plan to. Um, so my name is Jeremy. Um, I actually grew up in the Corn Belt of the Midwest, Great Lakes region. So agriculture was ubiquitous. It is ubiquitous for us in everyday life, for health, climate, uh, and ultimately it's, it's not been sustainable. And that's one of the things we, we want to change. Um, so I'm working with Felix and Active Allies is the initiator, uh, the initiator for the Central Valley Grow Better initiative. Um, so first of all, regenerative agriculture starts with farming the way nature works. Uh, it's a win-win way to put carbon back in the soil and it also has broader benefits, including jobs, economic justice, healthy food and community resiliency. Um, while producing 250 different crops in about a quarter of Americans food, Central Valley is a natural place to sow the Grow Better initiative, if you will. Uh, within the Central Valley, we aim to build a rural, small, town-urban coalition to grow awareness in support of rapid regenerative agriculture uh, adoption. Uh, this coalition will be led by and composed of owners and employees of farms along with job seekers, community organizers, policy advocates, and more in partnership with offices and elected, uh, or sorry, with partnership with offices and elected officials and governmental agencies, we will gain funding to launch the California Grown Better Corps. And uh, yeah, let's combat climate change through growing better, everybody. And I'll pass it back to you, Felix. Thank you. Uh, the second project is called CalCars Squared, named after the uh, organization that I led, uh, founded and led in the, uh, years ago. Uh, the question is, there are uh, millions of new electric vehicles coming into, coming into uh, uh, use, but there will be uh, 1.5 million existing vehicles in the world uh, uh, that we're going to, most of them are going to stick around for decades. And we began to ask, is there a way to convert hundreds of millions of gas guzzlers to plug-ins fast? And we're exploring that now, uh, and we're getting a, a really enthusiastic response from people who know a lot about it on a technical basis and about the idea. Um, and uh, what we're coming up with so far is uh, just the way it, at Calco's, we, got a, we, we talked about it for a while and didn't get anywhere, but we got a lot of attention when we took a plug, a hybrid and added batteries to it and drove it around the Bay Area with a sign saying this plug-in hybrid gets 100 plus miles per gallon. And we did that in 2004. And in 2009, GM uh, announced they were building the, uh, the Chevy Volt and others followed then. And we did a whole long campaign that was based on uh, demonstrations, uh, uh, conversions. And so we're looking at that again now. And we realize that the low hanging fruit could be tractors and pickups. Uh, uh, pickups because they, you can put batteries under the, uh, the, the flatbed in the back uh, and tractors because they don't drive very far uh, and uh, uh, there's where places to put batteries and, and convert them as well. And as it happens, tractors and pickup trucks, that uh, connects really well with the Grow Better uh, initiative because that's uh, focused on farms. Uh, so that's uh, project number two. 
uh, and the third one uh, is uh, active allies itself. So uh, here's another way of summarizing what we do. We enlist active network people to support youth employment for climate action and justice and to advance both the idea of intergenerational action and our platform to connect people. So we're working to get uh, people uh, for uh, for all of those uh, all of those projects, and we have other projects we're hoping to advance. For instance, one is called Voices for Our Future, which would have intergenerational conversations between younger and older activists, comparing notes and seeing what they can learn from each other, as well as how they can help each other and work with each other. Now, as for some specifics on volunteering and other roles, uh, I would have to say that. Uh, as an Ashby Village member, I have been amazed at the accomplishment uh, of my fellow members, both in their past lives and as they work together now. Uh, and I am confident that uh, there are people in villages who could uh, who want to work on climate, uh, who are going to be able to uh, have major roles in organizations, and we welcome you to join us. So most immediately uh, and ambitiously, uh, we're looking for three experienced people to lead these three startup projects. Uh, an idea remains an idea until it has a team. And a team is a person, at least one person with an idea, and a person to lead the project or at least start the project. And I'm hoping that one of those people might be you or you might send us to so someone you know. Uh, and share this uh, presentation or uh, tell them to take a look at Active Allies. Uh, and we expect soon to have uh, uh, several ways to work with partners to reassemble colleagues, my colleagues from two decades working on clean tech, plug-in cars and climate. And I think of that as bringing back the band and I'm looking forward to that. As for specific opportunities, uh, here's the list on our volunteer page and we can explain those. And uh, we are, wanna go back now to talk a little more about the pilot initiative for Grow Better in the Central Valley. So back to Jeremy for that. Uh, yeah, once again, thank you, Felix. Um, so more specifically for some of the volunteer positions we're thinking for, uh, um, the Central Valley Grow Better initiative. Uh, we're taking this from approach almost like a minimal valuable product. So thinking about what we need to get rolling. Um, so one of the first things we need to do is we need to gather information um, to be assembled uh, to create an independent crowdsourced Central Valley Grow Better wiki. Uh, so in this case, we'll need volunteers to help us map out who's who in regenerative agriculture within the Central Valley. This includes mapping out organizations, farmers, ranchers that are using regenerative agricultural practices right now. Also finding groups that are studying and promoting RA as well. Uh, and then we also need to find out or to identify more of the state programs or future ones we may propose for widespread adoption of regenerative agriculture. Uh, secondly, another big thing that we're thinking about is uh, we're potentially partnering with another group in Living Room Conversations where we could hold engagement and voice of former conversations and interviews through pairing them with those who work in regenerative agriculture and those who are interested in learning and playing the techniques themselves. Therefore, we would love to have volunteers who would be uh, excited to help bring people together, uh, mm -hmm. create guiding questions for these conversations and to be conveners for these events as well. Um, ultimately, all these roles, uh, initial roles are about uh, growing the connective tissue between regenerative agricultural practices in the Central Valley. Um, and hopefully they will grow into future roles in which we're partnering with government agencies to push through these uh, regenerative agricultural practices. And uh, thank you. Uh, I'll pass it back to you, Felix. Thank you. Uh, hang on a minute here. I've got my... Uh, uh, Felix, do you want questions now, or do you want us to hold them? Oh, let's take some more questions now. That, that's fine. But, but, uh, but, uh, but, and then I'll finish up. Okay, this is a question for you, uh, Jeremy. Sure. I'm curious, you mentioned farmers and ranchers in the Central Valley. Um, I'm sure they're large and small. And what about agribusiness? How does all of that come together? Well, so the initial idea is that we need to map out who is doing what currently in regenerative agriculture so we can have an understanding of the current ecosystem. And then understanding things like organizations who can help 
uh, promote these practices. Now, the one thing I would say about agribusiness broadly is that um, we don't, I, I don't think it's, it, we want to necessarily tell them they're doing something wrong if we don't agree with them uh, doing something. Uh, what we more want to do is spread the word and spread information about who is already applying these practices, the businesses and the agribusinesses who are promoting them or who have researched these things and build those connections first. That is probably the biggest part of it, first of all. Then that could start spilling into uh, altering um, you know, the ecosystem more broadly. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Steven. Um, Jeremy, could you give a, a thumbnail definition of what regenerative agriculture is? That's, that's a very loaded question, but I will try my best. Uh, first of all, many people will try to define regenerative agriculture uh, through a series of practices, some proven, some not. Um, ultimately, what the, the underlying principle though is, you want to have a sustainable agricultural system that is long lasting and regenerative, meaning that it doesn't die out after a few years or a lifetime of a person. It sustains itself over time. Now that has been more recently seen that we need to promote things that help with soil health, for instance, because topsoil is disappearing. That also means that we can't just have monoculture uh, industry dominating because that promotes issues with resilience, it reduces issues or things with resiliency, therefore you could destroy whole croplands. That is not regenerative or sustainable. So the thumbnail is probably the sustainability. I know that word's overused, but it's about keeping it for the long term and keeping it healthy. Does, does that imply um, um, trying to um, reduce or eliminate uh, chemical fertilizers? That normally does imply that. Uh, that does not restrict chemical fertilizers in the broader definition, though. A lot of people have been, for instance, saying that more natural, i.e. organic versions are better for regenerative agriculture, but there is a debate in that segment of regenerative agriculture on how much you can use synthetic versus uh, natural uh, fertilizers. Um, for instance, one of the great things going on right now is using microbes to uh, act as fertilizers. What they do is they nitrogen fix for you. They produce a lot of what you need to grow and then they die off and then you can put them back in. So it's, it's better than fixing some chemical and throwing it on there. Um, it, it, it's all about just trying to improve the system for the long term. Yeah. So I would, uh, here's how I describe a regenerative agriculture uh, in two kind of graphic ways. Uh, the first is, uh, inputs and outputs. Uh, regenerative agriculture can have none of the inputs that we usually think of. All the sides, pesticide, fungicide, herbicide, and less of one more crucial input, water. And the outputs, when you think of uh, agribusiness, big business, big ag, their outputs are poison. First, their outputs are poison to the air, water, and land and poison to the workers who work, work there. And the last thing they produce is food that could be much healthier and nutritious than it, that it is. So you're changing the inputs and the outputs. And the other thing about uh, if you compare big ag and regenerative agriculture, the big selling point of big ag is it's more efficient. And when they say it's more efficient, that's another way of saying we don't employ a lot of people. Now, in fact, it would be great if we employed millions of people in safe, healthy, well-paid jobs to give food to everybody in the world. Uh, my favorite thing that uh, 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 Paul Hawken, the, who wrote uh, Drawdown, who organized the Drawdown Project said is, human beings are the only species in the world that doesn't have full employment. And our human beings could have full employment with uh, food for everybody. So that's what rege re regenerative and, re uh, and, rege and restorative agriculture, you know, that's what it means to me. Uh, and I'm wondering, uh, uh, maybe here, uh, Anna, who's about to go uh, uh, work on a regenerative agriculture uh, farm for two months this summer, uh, if you might want to add anything. 
Sure, yeah. Um, I'm very excited about my farm immersion this summer. Um, I'm pretty like still new to the field of regenerative agriculture and I'm hoping to learn a lot this summer. Um, but the way that I think of it um, is really a holistic approach to ecosystem management. So the farm is part of the ecosystem. So you're not just looking at the crops or just looking at um, the cows. You're actually integrating those two things and multiple other things, um, parts of the system to basically mimic nature, um, how nature naturally operates and um, you know, takes care of the soil and um, uses the water cycle and the nutrient cycle to provide us with healthy, nutritious food, like the way that it's supposed to be. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my main um, uh, way of looking and, at it. And, and how about Jillian? Uh, you have some experience in this uh, as, in, as well. Let's see. If we... Yes, sorry. Um, my experience is probably a lot less than Jeremy's and Anna's, but I made a film about agricultural chemicals affecting dolphin populations. And um, right now we have like the detrimental effects about agricultural chemicals, but we're ch still trying to figure out what solution we're gonna implement in the um, film. So it was a really interesting film because I focus on the marine ecosystem. And so I learned about agricultural chemicals indirectly, but now I started having um, a bigger interest in it. So I'm excited to learn more just from listening to other people as well. You know, Felix, I want to mention something because I like how you talk about inputs and outputs. Um, everybody here who's joining, I assume, likes climate change or is interested in how that's going on. One of the biggest things causing global warming is CO2. It's all about inputs and outputs. It's all about sinks and sources. It's all about us having an in-stream and outstream and something accumulating or disappearing in the middle. So CO2 is accumulating in climate change. In this case, a lot is disappearing in our farming ecosystem that is just detrimental overall. So that inputs and outputs uh, discussion that Felix had is actually pretty appropriate. So maybe you can tell from that that uh, Jeremy is a chemical engineering uh, engineer by training, and uh, that's where that comes from. Uh, and the other thing, uh, just one more thing about regenerative agriculture, the icing on the cake is you're building up uh, uh, soil in uh, carbon in soil. Uh, you know, the, uh, 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 we have depleted soil that turns into dirt uh, all over the, in monoculture, uh, monocropping and so forth, and, and pesticides. And if you rebuild uh, soil and it turns into that black loamy stuff that, you, that, you, that you've seen sometimes, uh, then it's alive. And one of the ways it's alive is it's actively removing carbon from the air. So, other questions now. So, uh, a couple, just a couple more things here. Uh, uh, I have uh, found that several times what happens in the Bay Area gets attention because it comes from here. And I think that we uh, at Active Allies and the village movement itself could really be the pioneers with this program in, in showing uh, the world what, uh, uh, what can happen uh, when people say, oh, it's, it's if it's from the Bay Area, it must be very important. Uh, and we can take advantage of that. And we can be the incubator for intergenerational action on climate. And so I'm totally excited about all of uh, what we're doing here now. Uh, and uh, so I would uh, in, invite uh, you or people you know to consider sponsoring, mentoring, or advising people. And if you know young adults who want to devote their lives to working for a safe, healthy, just future, you can spread the word. Uh, they can apply to be candidate project managers. And uh, uh, one more plug for uh, one of our other core partners, uh, you can suggest to any people of any age who are looking at climate job opportunities to go to climate climatebase.org, which is a node for people who are uh, uh, creating their careers uh, in climate. Uh, and that, uh, uh, other, other, other questions uh, now? Yes, uh, Margaret. 
Yeah. Uh, how this year are you preparing extra for the water crisis, the drought that's coming, that's here? Well, I, I know there are problems. There's a problem on the Oregon San Francisco border, uh, a fight about the water. And I think the water issue is a big one. I was just wondering how it is integrated into your program. Well, I would say that uh, that some of the other groups are probably going to be more directly involved in that, uh, especially Sierra Club chapter, the Bay Area chapter, and 350 Bay Area. Um, I would okay. say that uh, the the message of regenerative agriculture becomes much stronger when you talk about uh, the fact that uh, uh, that soil is is meant to store water, not to turn into runoff. And you have floods all over the Midwest and many other places from, from because soil can't hold water. And we don't have enough water. So, uh, you know, this is obviously a long-term problem and we're, you know, we're in a, another extended drought period now. So that, that certainly, it, it, it causes people to think about that. Very good. Thank you. I, I have yes. a question related to, um, so just some things I've picked up from other discussions with village members in the uh, in some of these climate talks. People are interested in some cases in like in research and it, and so I was curious to know about in the building of the wiki, for instance, like if someone wasn't ready to step up and say, hey, I, I can, I can lead a, a whole project here. If but somebody wanted to help, say, do something like build a wiki, something they could do from home on their computer, that kind of thing. Are there opportunities like that for for people volunteering with that? Absolutely. So uh, back in 2016, I, with a partner, created uh, a wiki for called Climate Politics, which assembled information about uh, what uh, every uh, uh, a senator running for re-election and about 90 rep members of Congress, what they said and did about climate. And if you folks don't know about wikis, you've probably seen Wikipedia. There are many other wikis and wikis are basically just crowdsourced information where people submit it and uh, and other people can edit it and comment on it. it there, there, there are many great wikis and we wanna create an independent wiki uh, to, to do this. And what we're looking for at that point, if you take Go back to the Central Valley. We're looking to start identifying two counties where we could begin working. And the wiki would include information in categories about the organizations in that county, uh, in the individual regenerative agriculture projects, uh, uh, government programs and so forth, all of which would be submitted and edited. And we're going to be looking for, uh, for uh, uh, curators uh, or uh, um, yeah, I guess curators of the wiki and so forth. And uh, and if you don't know about wikis and are interested, uh, first, actually, look at Wikipedia. Most people who go there never notice there are two pages besides the article page. There's a page that's called a talk page where people comment about the wiki and what's happening and questions they might have. And there's a history page which tracks every single edit to the to the wiki by uh, uh, by IP number or by registered user. And so wikis are these living encyclopedias. I think it's a, one of the miracles of, of 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 modern civilization, Wikipedia. And so they're they're jointly. Uh, uh, managed and sometimes they get controversial. Sometimes people disagree. Sometimes that that disagreement happens in the talk page, or sometimes there people have the power to freeze a page if it's controversial. Anyway, wikis are an amazing thing, and I think it can be a fantastic tool uh, that we would like to start. We would like to start a wiki for for the Central Valley project, but there is no uh, independent wiki for regenerative agriculture. So we could imagine this as the embryo for a regenerative agriculture global wiki. So people could participate with you in research and contribute to those wikis? Yes, and also managing the wiki. And okay, and those are great roles. Yes. Yeah, I, I think actually one of the things we envis envision for the Central Valley Grow Better wiki and other things we're looking at right away, if we want to really simplify it down into like segments of types of roles, curation, research, 
of any sort the, of these things that we're talking about regenerative agriculture engagement so some get some of those conversations going or reaching out to people and then miscellaneous uh technical such as building the wiki or maintaining the wiki so those if, if we had to simplify it those are very concrete things that we could really use help on for sure and as it happens uh, on that of the three projects on that one we have jeremy who is enthusiastically starting to be the the point person for the whole project so we're in a position now to take uh, 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 you know to 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 connect you as a volunteer to begin that process yes uh, bruce hi it's bruce point 2 this is laura hi hi um yeah, I was interested in whether or not you have considered or, or are seeking uh, foundation funding. It sounds like a lot of this is private money that you've talked about. Uh, so I, I have a, a, a background as an entrepreneur. And uh, my experience is that when you go to ask someone to support you, uh, you don't you wait, you don't go where you just have an idea. You go when you've got something to show and you say we've got a team and here's what we've done so far. And I would say that when we're further along, absolutely. Uh, I will say at the same time that it is mind-boggling that the philanthropic uh, world has been so uncommitted to the most important issue that, uh, of our time. If you look at anyone who uh, uh, who looks at climate philanthropy, that's they're complaining about it all the time. And uh, and I'm hoping that's going to begin to change. Uh, uh, McKinsey, uh, McKinsey, whatever her last name is, uh, Jeff Bezos' wife has supported uh, uh, in significant ways climate. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, other people are starting to step up, but it still isn't there. Yes, Steve, Stephen. Be unmute. Yeah, since, you know, it's, I think people are finally beginning to realize that climate change is an existential problem, right? And, and it, and it, it truly is, or could be the end of the world as we know it. And I think the younger people are going to be more affected than than us. So I think it's good to get everybody aware of that picture. Absolutely. Yeah, I, so I have a, my little bookshelf over here. I've given away uh, over 100 copies of this book, which is a little $10 book. It's called, it's Greta Thunberg. No one is too small to take a, make a difference. And it basically, uh, what, what she says boils down to, if your house is on fire, why aren't you acting like your house is on fire? And, uh, you know, and, and so uh, I think that, you know, the voices of young people uh, are what are going to you know, at some point, transform our situation. Yes, uh, Julie, did you? No. Well, it sounds like uh, uh, there's actually a significant amount of interest in the uh, in the Grow Better project, which I'm really encouraged about. And uh, I hope you'll uh, take a look at uh, at all the uh, uh, the resources uh, that we that we list uh, uh, in the uh, and uh, activeallies.org. I hope you get excited about us and about the other groups that are presenting. Uh, and I think uh, uh, I've had a great time today. Thank you, Felix. Uh, any other questions before we go to Bruce, who's going to briefly summarize and then ask you for any additions um, about what we heard today. Any other questions? Okay, Bruce, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, so I am going, I have been <laughs> taking notes like crazy here, and it's going to be much better organized when I write it up, because we, we kind of covered a lot and came back to various things. But essentially, um, some of the key pieces I picked up are um, active allies is in a formative stage, but it's Basically, the organization's purpose is to have a stress on intergener intergenerational collaboration around climate change work. Um, some of the, the key roles that they're looking to um, village fight the elder folks like us to fulfill are sponsors, mentors, and advisors. And we have 
talked through what each of those is. Um, we had questions that I have a bunch of Q and A that I'll that I'll write up around um, how money how we get money for salaries the the role sponsors can can play with that. Um, then uh, what about becoming a 501c3 and what will that mean? When will that happen? We talked about corporate sponsorship and where they might get involved. Uh, specifically around the electrifying cars and the regenerative agriculture projects. Um, and then we went into more depth on the Grow Better initiative on regenerative agriculture and the CalCar Squared projects. Um, I've got detail about what, what Jeremy and Felix and, and Jillian um, all had to say about uh, the regenerative agriculture. Um, as well as what Felix had to say about his previous experience with uh, car conversions and what we're looking to do with tractors and pickups and how that can relate to the regenerative agriculture. Um, and then it was kind of the third project that was brought up was Active Allies itself is a networking organization um, that works very collaboratively with a lot of other org organizations on climate change in the Bay Area. Um, and then we're, uh, Felix, talked about how we're looking for three experienced people to, to lead on these three projects. Um, and we kind of focused back on the grow better and where we can, um, you know, kind of what, what that is, what regenerative agriculture is, um, and how people, how volunteers could be involved, particularly around the wiki, if you dive a little more into the weeds um, beyond the project leadership. Um, and you know what we're trying to build with the wiki um and i got a lot more detail in here <laughs> that will be in the in what i write up um but that's basically um the stuff i got you know captured some other questions about what, what we're doing on water and drought for instance um and then um and then Jeremy gave a good point, made some good points about how he how he sees what the wiki can be and what kind of work is, is needed to support the wiki. And then we had the, the question of foundation funding and how we'll do that when we're when we're ready and we've got something to show. So that's what I'm working with. If anybody you, Bruce. they'd like me to make sure to highlight or you know that I've left anything out, let me know. Any additional thoughts from anybody about what Bruce summarized? This isn't an additional thought, but a question. I, a couple of things came to my mind. Somebody I know in Seattle who's working in international kind of regenerative agriculture, somebody who might want to apply for that, uh, for a grant. How, where would we funnel if we have any contacts or suggestions? How would we get them to you? Uh, info at activeallies.org is a great way to do that. Okay. Um, and uh, I, that, uh, I guess, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, Jeremy, you could put that uh, you could put that that last page up again, uh, if you want. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I would just say the last thing I would say is that uh, uh, we're at the stage where anybody who comes in uh, could, uh, uh, could have a tremendous impact uh, and help shape all of these things. And that would be uh, uh, that would be, you know, a great, a great way to join in. We don't have the info ad address on that screen. Sorry about that. I just dropped it in the chat okay. for anyone who wants to copy paste it. Okay. Felix, is that information in the information you already sent out? I think it is. It is. It is uh, uh, the the our resources, uh, and I also ha have pasted in that list of organizations with URLs for each one, uh, and we'll, we'll you will have more information there as as it comes along. We'll have a link to the to this video and so forth. After the last um, the first talk that we had with 350 Bay Area Nan Farley, we had the summary that was done of that talk. It was so good that we sent it out to everybody who attended and I pasted in all of the chat information, all the resources that Nan uh, provided and Felix, you've sent those out or I sent those out via you earlier, but we can put that all together into one, one doc and send that out. 
Fantastic. So we will do that. But I thought today's conversation was really just great. I have thoroughly enjoyed it and learned a lot. And I want to thank you, Felix and Jeremy and Anna and Jillian for providing a great presentation today. Thank you very much. We're going to meet again next Friday. Uh, we're going to hear about elders climate action. So if any of you want to come back next Friday, that'll be another interesting conversation. And of course, the, the big um, final event is on Friday, May the 14th, when we're all going to come together and share what we've learned about each of these different five climate action organizations. And these summaries will be shared there and hopefully ex inspire all of us to find a way to get involved. So I don't have any more today. Anything else from anybody else on the call? Okay, folks, well, this has been great. Thanks everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah, very I really enjoyed this. Thanks, Thank Felix. You. Thank you. Bye-bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.